Hello, I'm Pat Obi at Purdue University Northwest. This video presentation is on hypothesis testing, which is a statistical process designed to resolve conflicts between two competing positions or claims. Now, the stated claim or position is referred to as the null hypothesis and is written as H sub zero. And the other is the alternative hypothesis and is denoted as H sub 1 or H sub A, A for alternative. The claim is typically about the value of a population parameter and that parameter could be the population mean or the population variance or the population proportion. These are the typical parameters against which we conduct a test of hypothesis. Now the conflict we speak to here exists because we don't have at our, di at our disposal the entire population data out of which to be certain of what the, tr what the true uh, population parameter is. And so we can only make inferences based on samples. And so in a way the, this leaves open the debates as to what the parameter value truly is. And so to verify the claim, therefore, what we're going to do is to take a sample. As an example, suppose some agricultural firm claims that a bag of wheat that it produces weighs 50 pounds. And so 50 pounds represents the hypothesized value, the claim made by this firm. Now, on the other hand, some consumer group isn't convinced about the claim. And so to verify, the consumer group proceeds and takes a sample of, let's say, 100 bags of wheat produced by this firm. And they're going to weigh each of them to be sure. Now, let's suppose that the sample, uh, out of their sample of 100 bags, they find an average weight of 47 pounds. So we got a situation here. The question then becomes, is 47 pounds statistically significantly below the hypothesized value of 50 pounds, allowing some margin of error since we're working uh, with a sample as to cause this consumer group to cry foul and say the food processing firm, that the agricultural firm is lying. And so obviously, if I minimize this, if we determine that this 47 pounds, even though it's less than 50, but it lies within the margin of error right there. Now we'll come away and say, okay, it's not really statistically significant. But if on the other hand, we determine that it lies somewhere out here in the tail region, in the rejection region, as I've marked it, then we're going to conclude and say, no, 47 is statistically significantly different uh, than 50 pounds. Similarly, if we came out and found that the average size is 52, the same question would arise. Is 52, even though it's more than 50, is it out here um, within the margin of error or is it out here in the significance region? So to be sure of what the significance regions are, we're going to have to find cutoffs right here and right here. And so our decision rule in hypothesis testing is going to be based on one of two grounds. So we're either going to compare the Z value which we calculate using our sample estimates, right? Because from our sample, we can, we'll calculate the sample mean. We find the sample standard deviation based on that sample size. This mu sub zero is the hypothesized value in this example 50. So this is the difference between the hypothesized value and the actual sample estimate that we find. And the denominator here, if you recall, is the standard error of the sample mean right there. So we're either going to uh, compare the Z value we calculate to the Z critical value which we obtain from the table and then we're going to reject the null hypothesis if our calculated Z value lies in the rejection region as I pointed out in the, sen in the sense that it lies either here or it lies over there. Now alternatively we can't compare 
p-value which we calculate to the level of significance alpha which we choose for the test. Now p-value, as I'm going to explain in the next video, represents the smallest level of significance at which the null hypothesis can be rejected. And so if we, we're going to reject the null hypothesis if the p-value which we calculate from our data is below the level of significance with which the test is being carried out. So for example, let's say that to conduct a test of hypothesis we choose to test using the 95% confidence level. 95% confidence level translates to alpha of 5%, which is the same thing as 0.05. So on a two-tail test, that means that each part of the tail would be 0 0.025 and the other side would be 0 0.025. Now we're going to find that the Z value that corresponds to this test would be 1.96. And so 1.96 with a negative sign, of course, since it's below the mean uh, of the standard normal variable would have a negative sign. So it's going to be positioned here and positive 1.96 will be positioned here. And so what we're going to do then, if I go back here, would be to calculate our Z using our sample data. And if the Z we calculate is less than negative 1.96, then we reject the null hypothesis because our Z, which lies in the significance region, is telling us that the sample mean that was obtained is statistically significantly below the hypothesized value. Likewise, if the Z we calculate is, is uh, larger than 1.96 in the sense, sense that it lies out here, then we're going to say, oh well, that the sample mean that was obtained from our sample is statistically significantly greater than the hypothesized mean value right here, in which case we're going to reject the null hypothesis. But if the Z we calculate lies somewhere in here within this area of 0.95, then we'll say that even though it's different than the hypothesized mean value, but that difference uh, doesn't amount to a hill of beans as it were. It's not statistically significant. I know you may be asking, how did we get this 1.96 again based on this alpha, alpha of 0.05? Well, first of all, remember the total area under the curve is 1. And so if 5% represents the tail regions shared equally, 0.05 here, 0.025 here, and 0.025 here, that means this unshaded region is 0.95, half of which is 0.475. So if we went to the Z table, we're going to find that the corresponding Z value to an area of 0.475 will come out to be 1.96. Let's show it right there. That's our Z value. And as you can see here, within the table, you find the probability values. So exactly we find 0.475 here. And you can see the Z value is 1.96 right there. And that's it right there. And if it's one tail, then in which case, as uh, so I'm going to explain later, then that leaves us with uh, an area of 0.45. And the area of 0.45 in the sense that this whole area is going to be 0.05, leaving us with 0.45 here. And if we went over here, you'll find that of 0.45, it's, it's straddled by these two numbers here. So we could call the Z value 1.645. All right. So a few quick examples are shown here. If uh, based on the hypothesized value of 50, the alternative hypothesis would be that the mean is not equal to 50. So again, testing at the 5% level, we find the critical value of Z to be 1.96. So anytime you see equality, it means it's a two-tailed test because if you wind up getting a sample mean that's be much below 50 or much above 50 in that it lies out here, 
uh, much below 50 would lie out here, then you're going to reject this null hypothesis and conclude, and, uh, conclude that the alternative hypothesis is upheld in that the mean is not equal to 50. And for a one-tail test, this is an upper tail. So here, the null hypothesis is, this, is that the mean is below 55. So with this construct, you're going to have a right tail test. So that even if you came up with an X bar, a sample mean that's a little above 55, but it lies within this margin of error, you still would not want to re uh, reject the null hypothesis. The only time you want to do so is if you determine that it's much above 55 in that your calculated Z value lies out here in the rejection region, meaning it's greater than 1.645. On the other hand, with this lower tail and, and the Z value of negative 1.645, if we calculated Z value and it came out to be less than negative 1.645 in that it lies out here, then we're going to reject this null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis. So in general, the three conventional levels of significance with which hypothesis tests are carried out are summarized here, 10%, 5%, and 1%. These would be the critical values for a one-tail test, and these are the critical values for a two-tail test. So with this, you don't really have to go back and look at the Z table. This is your cheat sheet right here, and this is a wrap.